so I I started making another video and I had a phone call and that's why I interrupted. The other video was very positive. This video is going to be very, very negative. I don't know if even it's worth the upset I'm going to feel over it. Um, and I really probably shouldn't make it. I'm probably going to get in trouble for it. Uh, but I feel that it's important. I'm trying to figure things out. I don't really have all the answers. And to be honest, I'm speaking out of ignorance. But I'm trying to look at different things, different things I've heard, different things I've heard claimed. And into what the possibilities are. I'm watching videos from someone on YouTube, Black Hill Media, and <clears throat> he's been discussing the question of false flag attacks. He discussed the Lusitania burning of the Reichstag, and also he mentioned how the Israeli government has, although they failed, has attempted false flag attacks, and uh, the worst of them all was the, uh, the sinking of the USS Liberty. I remember some years ago, um, John McCain was running for president, and, uh, and Sarah Palin was running for vice president. And Sarah Palin came to a rally in Richmond, Virginia, and I went with some yeshiva boys from, from yeshiva, Virginia. I remember uh, Congressman uh, Cantor was there. And uh, as we were leaving, What's a Shabbos? So I was there, I believe it's a Strymal, for sure it's a Becca Shab, I think it's a Strymal also. And a, a woman came up to us and said, Are you Zionists? One well, the Bakram said, We are, but he isn't. And said, I'm not a Zionist. And she said, Well, you know, the Zionists killed my brother because he was on the USS Liberty. And the boys were upset about this, and they, and they of course, they. Uh, They're upset at this event. They probably never heard of it before. I'd heard of it once or twice and didn't know much about it. And I don't know what all the facts are. But this uh, Blackpool media presents a pretty, pretty strong argument that essentially Israel was trying to get America to fight a war against Egypt, and so the, therefore they, they sunk an American ship, an Israeli sunk an American ship, in order to frame the Egyptians to start a war. And it, it got me to thinking. I remember also when I was a Rav in Richmond, the, the Israeli government, they sent to various communities a shaliach, some, a, 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 an ambassador to, to different towns on behalf of Israel to promote Israeli propaganda. And the shaliach, I don't remember his name, saying how he's supportive of the Palestinians and he wants them to have their own state. And I asked him, why doesn't Israel just annex the land that they won in 67? And he said, well, then it wouldn't be a Jewish state anymore. He said, we're not idiots. 
something along those lines. It would no longer be a Jewish state if they were to annex the land and make the Palestinians all Israeli Arabs. But the problem with that is, in, you know, instead, the, uh, the Israelis are in a constant state of war with the Palestinians, the self-proclaimed Israelis and the self-proclaimed Palestinians. Neither of them are who they claim to be. That these are all made-up identities that are for political purposes. In a way, I've often said that, you know, in, 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 in the Hazino, in, in Deuteronomy 32, where it says, you have angered me with a no God, therefore I punish you with a non-nation. And that's essentially what happened here. They embraced atheism, and uh, abandoned Judaism, embraced atheism. And so and they cha- exchanged their Jewish identity for an Israeli identity. And so therefore, God is punishing them with a, a non-people. There's no such thing as a Palestinian people. But measure for measure, because no such thing as Israeli people. I've said this for at least 17 years. I've been saying this, and I believe it to be so. I think maybe longer than that. Because 
Veronica is in a state of peace. And there's no profit to be made in peace. You can only make money from war. And so they have to start a war and they have to get a dictator and put in a dictator so there should be a state of war. And I would venture to say that there is what to say. And that's true. But there's more. Because the, the Israeli goal is not only to make money. I think the real goal of the state of Israel is to uproot Judaism. And so they can hide behind a, uh, a facade of the IDF, of the Israeli Defense Force, of the Tzahal, when their goal is not defense, but their goal is to uproot Judaism. Because the fact of the matter is, they don't need to have women in the army. The only other country in the world that drafts women, that forces women to be in the army is North Korea. I think North Korea is a strange bedfellow for Israel to be emulating. They have the women there for immoral purposes. Rabbi Victor Miller, Zechat Sarek Bukharish wrote about this in several of his books. And they don't need the Haredim in their army. The purpose of bringing the Haredim in the army is not because they need more soldiers to defend the country. The purpose of bringing the Haredim into the army, bringing the ultra-Orthodox into the army, is that they should no longer be Haredim. They should no longer be ultra-Orthodox, or at least they should be sellouts, they should water down their Judaism. And eventually, the next generation, the next generation, eventually, the hope of the, of the Zionists is that they'll totally abandon Judaism and replace Judaism, which is a religion, with nationalism, which is a political movement, and not a religious movement. The original goal of the Zionists was that Ju Judaism should disappear. Herzl Yimach wrote that he wanted all, all the Jews to to convert to Christianity. And when he saw that uh, that wouldn't be a cure to anti-Semitism, he, he came up with his Zionist scheme. 